guys. We're going to do slightly uh, more complicated uh, 3D rendering today and try to add some nice patterns and colors to it. So let's open it up. I have a, uh, gonna open up a pattern that's very much like your flare skirt. Um, it's gonna be saved to Blackboard, so take a look at it. Um, I, I haven't changed the name of it yet, so I'm still using the size eight flare, but it'll be sort of size eight um, dress or something, because it'll be a full dress that we're gonna do. Okay, here it goes. Now there's a couple things I'm gonna do um, just uh, before we start off. So if you can see um, the back bodice and skirt, the center backs aren't lined up and this is gonna create issues later on with how we do our seaming. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is lined up. So I want to right click on my back. Now I'm gonna have this uh, saved for you by this time so you don't have to do that. But in case you're doing anything else, you always want your pieces to line up. It's going to create a lot of problems when you're trying to apply your seams. So have, you know, this is the, uh, uh, basically the right half of the back, and this is the left half of the back. You want all the same half. So I'm going to flip around my bodice pieces so uh, we are all working with the same pieces, or the same half. Okay, so see this? My center back is all lined up here. Do, 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 do. And uh, my front is all lined up here. Okay, so our center front here. Now I want to go ahead and open up the half of my front. I'm going to have the center front unfold uh, just the same. So let's um, just open up my toolbox really quickly. and set the half there we go we can get rid of it for now just to have a little bit more space and i need to set properties for my bodice pieces uh the skirt pieces we already set them so they have the correct properties already assigned but let's go ahead and, uh, but very first, before we even get to 3D properties, I gotta go to the piece attributes. And this is fine for the front piece. If the half is checked. Uh, I don't need a pair of them. I just need one of them. Okay, so that's fine. But let's move to the back piece. And for the back piece, we do need a pair, okay? We need that right and left half. Uh, so that's gonna give us two, just like the back skirt is. Now let's go to our 3D properties and synchronize the properties um, for the bodice pieces there. Uh, the back piece is obviously gonna go in the back and let's um, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do it a very uh, slightly. It curves both halves, which can be kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna do it a little bit. I'm gonna do a full 50% for the front though. You'll see it, it, it fits a lot better and works a lot better for the, that full piece. Alrighty, let's synchronize. Now let's do the front, and I'm gonna do, uh, front is fine, it's already labeled at the front by default. Cylinder 50%, okay doke, and synchronize. Okay, now they should be all set with their curves. Let's place them on Ava, and the placement for the skirt should have been saved. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. Uh, I'm going to raise up her arm so it's not messing up with the side seam stitching. So just pop on over to model properties really quick. Go to pose and raise up her arms. Doo -doo -doo. And okay, that's enough properties for now. Um, now I'm going to grab the shirt, hold shift, and move it up. I'm going to move it out too. You see it's it's fairly sunken into her body. 
Um, actually, I'll move it up a little bit more. So I'm going to hold control and right click to push it in and out. So there, that looks good. And let's spin it around. I'm going to lower these back pieces just a little bit. They seem kind of high. Hold shift and left click to move it down. And let's position shift and left click. Oops, I got both of them. So I'm going to undo that. Yeah, be careful here. If you hold shift too quickly, you might multiple select. So let's not multiple select. I'm going to select just my shirt, back bodice. Come on, let me do it. Select it. Okay, fine, don't select it. I'll move you anyway. So we're going to move it up. And obviously we got to move it out too because it's getting sunken into our body. So control right click and I'm going to push it back out. And I'm going to move this down just a wee bit more. Oh, I multiple selected it again. So I don't want the little lines getting in the way of everything. Okay, that looks pretty okay. And you see we have the stitches already for the side seams of the skirt, because we already did that yesterday, or I'm sorry, Tuesday and the center back seam. And you'll also notice that the darts have little uh, seam lines because Optitex knows that the darts should go together. Now this will only work with the dart tools that, that are sort of dashed. Uh, you can do this with a cut dart too. You just have to actually apply the seam. It doesn't do it automatically, but that's no, no, no problem. All right, let's go ahead and apply the stitches. Let's do our side seam first. One, two, three, four. Okie doke, and let's double check to see what it looks like. Okay, that looks good. That's what we want. Now let's do those shoulder seams. One, two, again, work clockwise. I probably want to zoom in because I do want to get that bit of the dart there, but that should be okay. There we go, looking good on the top there. All right, let's do our waist seam. I'm going to zoom in for this. Crab our stitching. One, two. This isn't clockwise, but let's see. Three, four. Okay, let's double check what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You see there's no area in the dart here where it's connected, but it should be connecting right around here, so that should be okay. Now, um, again, if this was flipped the other way, it would flip the stitches as well, so that's why I had to um, uh, flip it um, over the horizontal axis uh, at the beginning. Um, and also be careful because the direction, if you're going counterclockwise or something else, um, it may be picking up areas that you don't want it to, so be careful with that as well. Um, let's do the back waist. Let's flip her around. And I want to zoom in right here. And then we'll do a test simulation, and then we will see uh, how to add some color and things like that. Let's work clockwise. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's cross our fingers. As you know, our simulations, anything can happen. Oh, I forgot to do the center back. Oh well, let's see what happens. 
Well, it didn't do it anyway. So let's <laughs> let's do our center back seam. Okay, so remember this is a little bit different because it gets stitched to itself. So I'm going to apply the center back. I'm going to do my uh, first step. And then instead of doing the second step, because I don't have anywhere to really put it, I'm going to right click and right click till I get to the stitch select icon, which looks like that little Twizzler. Uh, select the stitch. And then in the 3D properties, I'm going to select flipped and symmetric. And we should get our little lines. There we go. Okay, let's try it out. Yep, not looking too bad. Might be looking a little tight on top. But I can deal with fit issues better than, you know, the whole thing falling off. That's not <laughs> something we want. Or bunching up. If you have a, an incorrect stitch, it'll get all bunchy and weird and not not so great. The best thing to do if you have a, a, a wonky stitch and you're just not quite sure what it is, I know it um, sounds like an annoying solution, but to delete all of your stitches. Because sometimes um, you've applied a stitch and you're not quite sure what's happening. No matter what, you know, a little wonky little flare right there. I'm not sure what happened. At least it happens symmetrically, I guess. Um, but there's our, our, our drape. So um, pretty good. Uh, not too bad. Um, we're going to keep that on her for now. And let's take a look. Actually, let me do a kind of side so we can see what's happening on back and front. Because we're going to try to add some colors and some textures to this. So I want to be able to see all my pieces so I can kind of click between them. And I, for now, I'm going to get rid of my piece and 3D properties because we have way too many windows to begin with. And I'm going to open up uh, two different windows. I'm going to open up my shader and my shader manager. Now, um, OptiText from older versions of OptiText, they changed their shader, which deals with colors and textures, prints, logos, things like that. Um, and I don't particularly like the new versions of it, it is insanely more complicated. It used to be just really, really easy to set um, colors and textures. Now it's sort of um, you do things and you're not quite sure why they're doing it or where or when. Um, <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll stumble upon it and see what happens. So you want to get both of these windows open. And basically, they have um, the ability to set, like I said, colors and textures and even put logos and different images on your uh, look. So let's just go with some basic stuff, like basic colors. So um, here we have our options, our shaders, and it's a, uh, right now we have a piece and a stitch. Um, you can shade a stitch. Um, I guess if it's a, a particular type of stitch that you want a particular color or whatever, but we're going to work with piece. So I'm going to um, click up here on piece. Okay. I'm going to keep it on variant and hope that we get the little box that gives us color. If not, we're going to go to article <laughs> and ah, there it is. So, um, Variant one is, is based, the variants are different sort of colors and combinations that you can apply to different pieces. Um, the default is to apply it to all pieces because you assume if you have one color, it's going to go for the same whole outfit. Now that's not necessarily true. And we're going to attempt to do different colors and patterns for different pieces uh, later on. But let's just start with the simple stuff. And every article is a different sort of color. 
um, or layer of color or even pa print, pattern, texture, whatever um, uh, for your pattern piece. So now I have my article one. I can choose a color here in my shader version. Um, and it has this little palette box that I can choose from, or I can type in an RGB value uh, here. So this is, you know, our RGB values. Um, uh, this is white, 225 or 255, 255, 255 is white, and I can type it in. Or we can just, do we have other palettes? I guess you can load a new palette. I don't know what that gets you, but this is a fairly good palette. And let's make a nice blue dress. Boom. Okay. So simple, easy, nice little blue dress. Um, we can do uh, different things as well uh, with this blue. So what we can do is um, we can adjust the shininess, right? I should be able to. Do I have to add a new layer? Yeah, this, this, I want it to be shiny. No, you're not going to let me? Oh, no. Um, do I have to add a new article? Okay. So, and it turns white, of course. All right, let's pop back up to article one. Do I have to add a new layer? Well, this is when I can download things, but I just want to... Okay. Now we have different um, textures here in the default. Ooh, let's try glitter. I'm not gonna guarantee this works. Um, okay, and then that doesn't look very glittery to me. Did it do anything? I don't see anything. Should. Should be there. Can I apply? Oh, okay, fine. All right. Well, Yeah, well, where is it? Is it doing it on the back? No. Ooh, we have a little bit of a fit problem right there. You see that? Or maybe that was a rendering problem. Who knows? Well, okay. Still not letting me do anything with the shiny. Is it because they don't like this? Okay, anyway. Um, well, we got a color. I can get a pattern on there, too. Um, my... Uh, there's help versions of this on Akutex. They're very not helpful. Um, like I said, this is uh, an entirely confusing process. I have... Um, I'm going to uh, duplicate this, and then let's try to assign a piece for this. So let's assign the front bodice. So I'm going to select the front bodice, and there, this one. Um, and there we go, but can I change the color? Now it should just change the top. Ooh, hey, not too shabby. So, um, again, let's try to do the back. I'm going to select the back. Okay. 
Right now we have another, it's, it's set on this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate. I guess I could add new, let's see if we add new. All right, and then I'm going to, it's selected, it's selected. And we can add a color. Let's make it black. And then I'm going to, while this is selected, assign to entire piece. Woohoo! So we can get different colors for different pieces. Okay. Um, now, let's pop on back to this piece, this one here in the front. Okay. Um, if I scroll down, there should be lots of different options. Like transparency. Yeah, there's my transparency, but it doesn't let me do anything. Don't know why. Let's go to background. Still nothing. And this is not very glittery. I'm very upset. Okay. Um. Let's mess around with it some more. So uh, what if I want a uh, pattern? So I'm pretty much gonna delete all these variants and stuff, So or go back to delete all of our articles and whatever, and start fresh, um, or else it gets kind of complicated. So there we go, we kind of deleted everything. And I can delete some of these things. I'm just gonna delete, delete, delete. Much of it will let me delete. Shade number 50, come on now. Okay, anywho. Okay, so let's say that I have a print. So um you can get a print um anywhere you want. I was messing around a little bit before and saved some things to the desktop, but um you can find your own print so you can just go to google um or you can make your own print um a credit for anyone that makes their own print um you can make your own print in adobe illustrator and then s export as a jpeg um so let's let's do a, a plaid and if you find an image with its own texture you don't have to worry about adding texture Make sure it doesn't have any sort of this in it or crop it out using Photoshop um, or else, of course, it's going to be in your drawing. So let's, what's a nice little, that's cute. There's no water, oh, there is a watermark. I don't want to use the watermark. Come on, give me something without a watermark. A little gray dress, that's cute. Let's use this. So I'm just gonna copy the image and then I'm just going to paste it on the desktop by right click paste. What? Didn't you copy? Oh wow, this is huge. I'm gonna find something a little bit smaller. It says it's a buffalo plaid. I consider only buffalo checks to be red and black. Although the world doesn't agree with me. There we go. Okay, so it's gonna hang out here. And what we're gonna do 
is article one. I'm going to just randomly click things <laughs> until it gives me a menu to have open up. Oh, it, that's on the stitch. Why? Uh, it has to be on piece. I can't apply a pattern to a, a piece. So uh, make sure that your shader location is piece. And now let's add a layer. So, okay, article one, or let's set it at variant, piece, variant, piece, not stitch, piece. And then let's go and add layer. And our little box is going to pop up. And I'm going to select that pattern. We had this little floral I was trying to figure things out with before, but I think this will be cuter. Yeah, it is. That's super cute. Aw. It's not bad. Okay, so that's how we do a print. Again, we can go back and uh, change things if we want to go ahead and do like, um, you know, different colors for different pattern pieces, maybe have just the skirt be black. Now, um, here it allows us to give a transparency. I don't know why it does it with the color, but you can go ahead and set transparency, um, which is neat. Uh, so you can do that. Um, you, so it might even just be easier to like upload solid colors um, and use them as patterns. And we can also make it shiny if we want. Ooh, super shiny. Okay, um, I don't know why those options weren't available to us for the colors, um, but hey, who knows? Um, okay, so now what I want to do is alter this a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this layer, and so we have this piece now, and um, what I want to do is I want to do something just different for the top. So I'm going to select just the top um, and let's oh let's say what should we do a color or we can just kind of make a sheer top make it sexy so if we just want to apply the oh never mind so what do we gotta do oh I see um, That's for the all over. I gotta go down here for just the for the bodice. Sorry about that. The unused is the ones that are on not in use yet. So I duplicated this to work on the shirt. Um, so I'm gonna select that. It's selected. So I'm gonna assign it to that. And let's see. I'm just gonna test the transparency to see if that's just gonna work on the shirt. Yep. Okay. So that's just for the shirt. So maybe we'll make a little bit transparent there. Um, and let's add a logo. So a logo is, so this puts the pattern in as an all over pattern, um, but you can also add in a different thing for uh, a logo, just an image. And you can, again, just like before, you can create your own uh, JPEG, um, or you can, find one on the internet and upload it. So let's say we wanted to make a, come on, come on. I don't know, put a picture of, um, you know, mm, I don't know, what should we put on there? Um, it's black and white. I'm not a little doggy. Perfect. They're so cute. 
So let's find one that's gonna... Got watermark, but that's okay. It's just a demo anyway. Do the same thing, paste it wherever you can grab it. And we're gonna go back here. And I am going to um now uh go to article one, which is this variant. Again, we're still on here. Article one is the different one. Um, and I'm going to add a layer. Now, after we have a base layer, any other layers that we add are logo layers, or at least I'm hoping. So I'm going to add this. And you'll notice, boop, um, again, it's not all over. It's just a, it places the image uh, just right on it. Now, down here, what we can do is we can adjust the size. So this is to lock the size. So let's Bring it down a little bit because he's a little big. Um, maybe like this. There we go. Um, and you can also adjust the placement here. So um, it's going to put it sort of in the middle of the pattern piece. Um, but you can offset it here. So if I want it a little higher or a little lower, I can start to add, let's add an inch offset there to raise it up or negative to lower it. Um, wherever you want to put it. Actually, let's do negative one. That looks good. Um, you also have the ability to look at where it is sitting on your actual pattern piece. So you see it right here. And uh, you can actually move it around, I think. Or maybe not. So the dotted line is representing the pattern. Okay, so you got to do it in the uh, in this little window. Um, you can also flip it around, boop, boop, whichever way you want your little doggy. Um, so and you can start to add uh, different images. So you can start to stack images. Uh, you can also blow it up. Uh, so if you want like a specific print, like let me, um, <clears throat> and we can get rid of layers with the delete layers. Let me show you an example. So um, I'm going to go back. Let's uh, actually up, going to up the transparency here. I can't change it again. <laughs> Great. Wait, or was it this one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're gonna make it shiny again, but that's okay. Um, let's add, I'm going to, for the skirt now, I'm going to try to just make the skirt a big sort of Scotty dog, uh, to show you one of the options that you can do. So let's, uh, zoom all, and I want to focus on this piece. So let's duplicate this and, uh, we're going to set it to the skirt. So then it's undefined right now. So unused, I just duplicated it. It's waiting for an allocation. So the skirt is selected. So I'm going to uh, assign to the entire piece. Uh, and let's just test. Actually, let's, well, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I'm gonna add a layer now to this, which should be my skirt. And I'm gonna add that same little Scotty dog. But I'm going to blow it up instead of shrinking it down. Boop. So we're going to come down here and blow them up. Make them super big. And 
And what I can do is now I can sort of offset them. And we get like a very uh, uh, place specific print, which is pretty neat. So let's start to offset him on the X. Oh, I don't want to lock it. Oh, I can angle him too. If we can angle him up. Let's see what it does. Play around with it. Ooh, that might be cute. Let's start moving him over a little bit more. Let's move him down. Oops. Okay, this is freaking out now. Oh, we get his little little head. Go go go. So you can sort of play around again and uh, again get these sort of you know specific prints. Um, that's not an all-over pattern, um, but uh, a very interesting nonetheless. Um, so once you're done, let's say this is what I want. I know it's a bit wonky looking, but you'll make something better, I'm sure. What we can do is we can actually take a picture of our model. So this is, you know, at the point where um, we might want to... Uh, Actually, what happens when you pose her? I'm just going to do a test. Will it change? Yeah. You'd want to render it. So do the pose that you want beforehand. Otherwise, you might just put her arms down to look less weird. Um, before you render it, render it in a pose that you might want. Let's do. There we go. Remove the cloth, place the cloth. Hopefully the arms won't get too in the way. I'm still gonna put them up. It doesn't matter too much to do them up and down, but it, it definitely helps the simulation if you keep them up. And then we'll try once more. Oh, did I stop it? I didn't know you could stop it. All right, that was a little bit of a wonky simulation. Anyway, so we get the pose that we want. Might make the simulation a little bit wonky, but no matter. Um, then what we can do is we can take a little picture of her, um, uh, which is a pretty neat. It's, it's definitely very neat to have in a uh, portfolio um, because, you know, oh, look at this. I did a... Um, you know, uh, uh, 3D rendering and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just neato. So um, we're going to take a snapshot, a model snapshot, as soon as I can figure out where it is. Ooh, full screen mode. How neat. 
Uh-oh, I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> Uh-oh, come on now. Don't freak out. It's okay. It's all right. Easy does it. So here it is. Sorry, it's a little obviously. Uh, so we're going to save image. And you can name it whatever you want. And to wherever you want. Go to the desktop. Um, and yeah, it's going to save it as a JPEG. We can save it as different things. Okay. And there it is. Yay! So play around with it. Um, like you probably have noticed, the texture editors and the colors, um, if you mess around with it enough, it'll do stuff. It might not do exactly what you want, um, but mess around with it until you do. Um, uh, like I said, try to do as, you know, um, do as many or as few as you want. You are going to be required to do at least one uh, simulation. So do one simulation like this with a pattern. Uh, you can mix patterns or colors, have at least one pattern and one logo. Um, but again, how you detail it is going to be totally up to you. Um, you can do the skirt a solid color, a print on top, a little logo on the side over here. That's going to be up to you. Um, um, and you can, of course, use any images. But like I said, play around with it. Play around with the transparencies. It is pretty annoying to have to do. Um, um, I wish I could, you know, guide you a little bit better, but honestly, I'm still sort of working it out. I don't know why they switched so dramatically from their original shader manager, which was really, really easy to use and very, very simple. And you could do all of the same stuff. Um, but maybe it's just a new thing and I'm still smoothing it out. Um, but you know, play around with it. That's the best way to learn. Um, and again, it's it's pretty neat. It's pretty fun. Um, it's certainly a fun, neat way to design. Um, you know, uh, imagine just doing this instead of having to render that little check uh, check pattern uh, sketching. Uh, as all of you probably know how long and tedious it takes to render um, little print patterns and textures like that. Um, we can do it at the click of a button um, as soon as we sort of figure out what's going on. So play around with it. Look uh, again to the Optitex help um, for in the 3D section for the shader managings and editing your shaders for a little bit of help. I didn't find it super helpful, um, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> and uh, this will be this is going to be your last assignment. It's uh, due next week, um, not Monday, of course, because you should be having a nice Memorial Day Monday, a uh, nice Memorial Day weekend. Um, but I'm going to put this up on the pattern up on Blackboard and have fun with it. Um, come up with some nice little textures and color combos and little logos and things like that. Really, you know, have fun with it. And again, um, it's, it's a bit annoying to have to use. Just remember, um, look at what you're selecting piece. You can actually select a few different things, but make sure you're selecting the piece and not the stitch. Make uh, flip between variant and article to see what that does. Add layers on the actual uh, uh, stitch menu to add different patterns and things like that. Um, if you get stuck, you know, just start randomly clicking things until it works. <laughs> what what I do? Uh, <laughs> have fun with it um, and uh, send me your JPEGs um, of your finished. Uh, simulations with your patterns and, and colors and everything like that. Um, and how, yeah, like I said, have fun with it. So I will leave you. And this is actually going to be also our last video. Um, so uh, starting next week, um, I'm only, if you need help with your finals or anything like that, I want to keep myself open to doing that. So um, let me know. If you need help with anything, if, if you want me to check it over before you uh, hand it in, let me know too. Otherwise, bye-bye, uh, and I'll see you next week.